first brief introduction about BioBest. It was uh, founded by Ronald de Jonge as the first bumblebee producer for agricultural pollination purposes, after which it quickly moved on into uh, IPM and also started producing macro and microbials to combat uh, diseases and pests. And uh, since <clears throat> beneficials alone are not the entire solution, um, one also needs a good strategy. Uh, this is why BioBest has always strived to give the best in class advice in order to get the most out of these beneficials. But we also believe that aside from good advice and beneficials, um, like in many other sectors, an important next step will be data driven solutions and decisions. And today I want to uh, highlight the opportunities these uh, high tech solutions may bring to IPM. So let's uh, dive right into this topic. Um, the best I wanted to highlight today is Tupanchilia favialis. It's um, also called the European pepper moth. And um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this best. The adult can be uh, recognized by the characteristic U shape on its uh, lower, lower wing. And the uh, um, caterpillars can be recognized by this, uh, well, dark plate. Uh, right behind the head on its thorax. Well, Dupanchilia is a widespread problem. Many uh, potted ornamentals um, has a very wide host range and depending on the temperature, the development time can actually be uh, quite short and uh, under favorable circumstances, Dupanchilia can reach eight up to nine uh, generations per year even. It lays about 200 eggs during its lifetime and uh, is mostly nocturnal. Now, I've um, well uh, laid out the uh, life phases, the life stages of Tupanchilia here. And what is interesting to see is that actually the adult part of its life is relatively short, um, but still essential to to notice um, and to uh, to detect and to get a grip on. So this is a, yeah, this will come back later. It's an important aspect. Now, Lupinchilia can be quite damaging uh, to potted plants. So it feed, the caterpillars uh, feed on the stem, um, just, yeah, uh, making holes in the leaves, but can also, as you can see here, feed, sorry, can feed on the leaves thus uh, reducing the cosmetic value of the plants, but also can feed on, uh, on the stem and uh, yeah, thus uh, stunting and uh, basically uh, killing the entire plant. And yeah, because these uh, damage, uh, these types of damages can be initially overlooked, but can be uh, yeah detrimental later on. Now, how do we commonly scout for uh, for Dupinchilia. Stick traps is of course uh, yeah very uh, well known uh, method to uh, to capture adults and uh, to detect the presence uh, of uh, of these adults in in the crop as are delta traps containing pheromones or UV lamps um, and the latter two also actively uh, interfere uh, in their life cycle uh, disrupting it. Then Crop scouting is a, a last one and actually uh, one of the few um, methods with which you can actually detect the caterpillars in the crop. Now, despite these different methods of scouting, we notice that we're often still too late in detecting um, yeah, uh, the Dupanchilia population in time. And a single moth left unnoticed and therefore uncontrolled can already have a great impact later on. So, a quick um, wrap up of the problem. In short, um, Dupanchilia is often detected too late. And um, yeah, it has already done, it can already have done quite some damage before it is detected. And this late detection is also likely to result in uh, a large subsequent population, like a, a bigger second generation. And the second generation will be more difficult to control, um, especially with uh, BT products, with yeah, Bacillus thuriensis products, which 
would normally work better on uh, smaller populations and younger instars. And corrective chemical sprays uh, can yeah, heavily damage the rest of your IPM program. Now, and like I already mentioned, the adult stage is actually a small part of the total life stage, but it's one of the few life stages that we can, well, e yeah, detect relatively easily. So um, it is essential that we uh, are um, uh, that we are detecting these adults in time. Also, due to its nocturnal behavior, um, we may have little notion about the activity of Dupanchelia and uh, its flying behavior during the night. And yeah, that um, sometimes makes us underestimate the uh, the actual presence of the moth. And lastly, did not put this on the slide, I think. Lastly, um, in general, in ornamentals, we have a, um, a low damage threshold because the cosmetic value of the plant is, uh, is the most important. So there is actually a, um, yeah, a low tolerance for moths in the greenhouse. So in short, the need, there's a need and a demand for an early detection and a real-time monitoring to know what is happening in the greenhouse. Now, this is where we believe POTS-C comes in. First, a, few, uh, a quick introduction. POTS is a, a Dutch company, a tech a company focusing mainly on high-tech uh, solutions in IBM programs. And BioVest and POTS have uh, partnered up and um, yeah, are putting POTS-C to good use. Let's move on to POTC. What is POTC? POTC is a device that actually consists of two parts. The first part is a base station, and this base station uh, detects and tracks insects in 3D. This base station, furthermore, contains um, a chip, a 4G uh, chip, to send the data to the server. The device you see below is an LED module. And this LED module emits infrared light, which can also um, illuminate the insects at night. So uh, moths can also be detected in the night. And because this, um, yeah, the LED module is emitting infrared light, um, the insects do not perceive this and are thus um, not, yeah, not influenced in their in their behavior. Uh, and for your reference, the, um, the base station is more or less the size of a, of a football. It's not that big. It's, uh, the installation <clears throat> of these devices uh, is relatively easy. It's a plug and play principle. And the only thing uh, needed is actually a post to attach the devices on and a power outlet to, uh, to feed the devices uh, electricity. Now, to get a good sample, we recommend to install one system per hectare. And the current pests that are uh, being able to be detected now are listed here, um, with some very essential moth pests already being able to be detected, like uh, Tuta absoluta, uh, Opogona, but like I mentioned, Pupogelia and Chrysodiaxis as well. This list is furthermore updated uh, regularly. So whenever uh, the POTS is able to distinguish further, uh, yeah, more moth species, uh, the device can be updated remotely and thus, uh, yeah, increase its uh, value. And the grower does not have to do anything for this. It's basically like your phone gets updated remotely. Now let's take a look at what the POTS camera sees and what it registers. Here you see a um, POTS-C device, um, well, basically the point of view of a POTS-C device in uh, Kalangoe. You see on the left side a moth flying by, and on the right side what is actually being registered and processed. And also in succulents, an example of this video, So you see the moths in the left flying by, and in the right, on the right, you see what is being registered by the POTC device. 
And by analyzing the size of the moth that is flying by and the pattern it makes uh, when it's in the air, the species of moth is actually being determined by uh, artificial intelligence. Now, where does all this data go? Everything that is being recorded and uh, registered by uh, POTC devices is stored on uh, what we call the uh, digital dashboard. And um, yeah, I want to walk you through this dashboard and see uh, what data uh, this all contains. So the dashboard basically displays the number of counting, uh, the number of countings, the number of counted flights, as well as uh, the times of uh, the time of day when these flights have taken place. It uh, provides us also with uh, every single video of uh, of a flight that I just showed you. So if you're really interested in which moth is flying by, then you could actually search for uh, for that specific uh, clip. And it also provides uh, trend lines and um, yeah, hours of peak activity. And this is all very nice, but what does this data actually tell us? Well, first, and perhaps um, one of the most important aspects is it tells us when the moth first appears in a greenhouse. And um, this is an interesting example. Um, POTS is um, the POTC device is actually able to detect this uh, moth quite more early than than we often are. So um, it tells us when the first flights are being registered long before we actually uh, are able to uh, see it with conventional scouting methods. It also shows that at um, yeah, what time the, uh, the moths are most active. Uh, and as you can see here, this is a um, uh, this is a um, yeah on the y axis you see the number of countings and on the x axis you see uh, the time of day and um, this is from uh, a POTC device in uh, Bromelias as you can see here uh, clearly displays the peak hours of the Pipponchilia activity. And this is of course very valuable uh, information because one could use this information to uh, well apply uh, sprayings or LVMs at the right time of day. Just showing you another example. This is not Dupontilia. This is the result of Apogona, and then you clearly see that it has a very different uh, peak in time. The dashboard furthermore provides us with patterns. Um, so this is the results of the countings plotted over the entire year. And um, with this information, you can actually see how the moth population has been developing over the course of the entire year in the greenhouse. And um, yeah, this gives us an understanding uh, about the development of Dupontilia populations and uh, also to see what the uh, influences of climatic conditions could be on the, on the uh, population. Um, and perhaps an even better example is on this slide. So this is also uh, a Dupontilia counting uh, graph in uh, Bromelias. And as you can actually see, you can clearly distinguish the first, second, third, fifth, and sixth generation and well it's a bit perhaps small to zoom in but as we head into summer you clearly see that the peaks of these populations are closer to each other than for example here in colder weather so it really shows us also um, what the course is of the population development over the seasons In case you have more devices in your greenhouse, um, let's say you have a greenhouse of four hectares and you have one per hectare, the dashboard also shows you which um, camera registers what, and also you see uh, which yeah in which part of the greenhouse moth activity is highest. So here you see that every color is a different yes different camera. You can 
clearly see here that there's quite a lot of differences in countings between each camera. So it does not only show you when something is happening or what has happened over the past year, but it also shows you a bit where it's happening. And the trend lines. Also, uh, I think a very valuable feature. Um, short term trend lines and long term trend lines uh, really uh, help you as a user, as a grower to make uh, more sense of this data because uh, daily countings can be quite variable and these trend lines really help you to um, uh, see in which the direction, yeah, in which direction the population uh, is uh, developing into. So you know whether to take an action or whether perhaps just wait a little bit. So, quick sum up of the uh, uh, advantages of POTC. The dashboard is accessible from anywhere. Um, it's browser based, so you can log in to see your data from anywhere. It enables you to um, detect moths in a very early stage, which permits you to also act uh, timely and adequately. You can continuously track the population development uh, over the course of the year and uh, see uh, how your uh, um, actions or how the weather or other circumstances are affecting the moth population. You learn more about moth behavior and life cycles, and you will also see that different moth species have different life cycles or different uh, yeah, times of, uh, of activity. These trend lines really provide valuable opportunities for uh, for predictions, um, but also I have to add for reflections. You can look back on last season and see um, uh, what we did. Uh, did that work out? Did we see the population go down or should we do something different next year? Or at which time of year can we expect um, most most moth populations or the first moth population? So it gives you, uh, I think, a very uh, yeah valuable tool to uh, to reflect on uh, last season and to improve your strategy for next season. And um, last but not least, um, also some uh, reduction um, or some uh, labor saving because everything is counted, registered and uploaded directly to the dashboard. There is no, um, yeah, um, no, no case of um, scouting uh, data written on paper, having to be entered in Excel and then having to be uploaded. This is all uh, automatically done, um, which uh, also uh, increases the, uh, the efficiency and uh, reduces the need for labor. So um, moving on to what we see as uh, uh, the added value of POTS in IPM. I already mentioned uh, briefly the early uh, detection and the early response, but this really is an important aspect. And I'll give you an example. I showed you first this slide where POTS detected the, um, the first presence of uh, moth. And I want to show you exactly how much earlier this was. POTS already registered the first moth on the 10th of February. Well, with conventional scouting methods, this was the 17th of April. And as you um, may or may not know, this is uh, oh, yeah, an entire generation later. And an earlier reaction also permits you to increase the efficacy of your green products like Delphin or other Bacillus thuriensis products. And um, yeah, to increase the efficacy on these younger instars and these earlier, smaller population. The awareness of activity time, as you can see here, um, you can see the activity throughout the throughout the day. There are some growers that used to do their spraying treatment at the end of the afternoon, while, for example, peak activity was here. But it can be even more extreme in in cases of other moths that we've seen in the case of. Opagona, there um, 
yeah, there actually uh, was a grower who told us that he always used to apply an uh, LVM treatment at the end of the afternoon. And he would air the greenhouse, he would ventilate it at 11 p.m. so that the following morning the greenhouse was ready to work in again. So this was the time of the LVM treatment. Well, actually, the peak activity was here. Now, this was Opagona, this was not Dupanchilia, but I think it's just very valuable to uh, to illustrate how, um, yeah, knowing the peak activity times can really um, um, show you when to do what and to improve your uh, your actions. So we've also spoken about the trends. I think that is a um, yeah a very valuable tool. I already mentioned it. Um, so you always have your um, results of last season. You can always look back what happened last season and uh, does that correspond with what I was trying to do? And uh, what can we do better for next season? It also gives you, I think, uh, clues when uh, the population when in the year do we see that increase? When can we expect the first moth? So perhaps next year, around that time, we can already start with a preventative spray, for example. So these trend lines and also the, yeah, the database to look back at really helps the grower to evaluate last season's result and to redesign uh, next season's strategy. We also think that uh, POTC really adds some detail and consistency. Um, I don't have to tell you that scouting is uh, sometimes, uh, well, the results are uh, can be really dependent on who is scouting and yeah, when that person is scouting um, and that the results between people may uh, may differ. And by doing so with a, uh, with a high tech device, there is always a consistency in the scouting and uh, less human error. And uh, this way, uh, the, the scouting results are always up to date and consistently gathered to help you uh, be as up to date as possible as a grower. If allowed, um, advisors can also keep track of the moth activity, so um, they can even give advice remotely. If the grower, yeah, wants to uh, share. For example, his uh, login credentials with the advisor. The advisor can uh, furthermore, yeah, be better informed before visiting a grower, and uh, therefore may offer more adequate solutions because he already knows what's going on in the greenhouse before he uh, he arrives at the doorstep. So we also believe that by using these POTS devices, um, the advice will be better up to date. And finally. This feature um, is uh, coming soon in the future, and I think this is an interesting one because uh, not everybody is checking the digital dashboard daily, but um, in the future it will be possible to set an alert on your uh, on your uh, device so that you can uh, get a notification as soon as certain thresholds are uh, exceeded. Let's say specific countings or let's say the first moth appearance so that the grower is alerted and notified when this is happening so that he can take uh, action uh, timely. Now, we really believe that um, POTS is a, POTC is a very valuable tool in the uh, IPM program. Of course, against Dupanchilia, you already have the HypoSPIS and the Athena system, uh, which are important to apply in an early stage to let it build up the population and the carpocapsae system against uh, uh, the Dupanchilia larvae. Well, but POTC really comes in nicely here because it really improves the timing of the BT products that can uh, that should be applied at the grower. So by increasing the, the well, by, uh, let's say, improving the timing of these uh, BT applications, it's also increasing its e efficacy. So we really believe that POTC is a, a valuable tool in uh, the IPM program against uh, Dupanchilia or, um, or any other moth for that matter.
So I also wanted to take the opportunity to share some experiences of growers, um, product plant growers who already are using POTC systems and um, how they have adapted their scouting or, or IPM practices. Something we hear uh, quite regularly is growers that are managing to suppress the moth populations for a longer amount of time with just BT products, uh, purely because these BT applications are um, applied more early and thus more um, yeah, uh, effectively and have a better efficacy. Some insight in the flight times and the activity times are also uh, very much appreciated. And I think this is a, um, a very nice one to uh, to show. Um, this is a, comes from a testimonial, um, which I'll get back to later. It was a grower stating that they have drastically reduced the economic damage by predicting the presence of the first caterpillars using last season's data and a consequent preventative spray. And this really shows you the value of the trend lines of the data from last season. You can see when more or less every season the moth population uh, is getting in the greenhouse um, when it develops when it grows and uh, yeah if you if you know that you can uh, um, you are less surprised and you can even go for preventative sprays so um, a better view of the first activity as well as the life cycles like I mentioned you can see that the life cycles are uh, not always yeah, they're not always predictable. You can see that depending on the weather, the, the population peaks are, um, well, close to each other or further from each other. So uh, it was also nice to see that it was appreciated that there was a, um, yeah, a good view of uh, when the, the population peaks were and when we could see the first activity. This is also something we hear we heard quite a lot. I can check whether my spray applications or LVM treatments are uh, reducing the moth populations. We see that uh, growers uh, check the dashboard, the weeks, the the, the consequent weeks, uh, the subsequent weeks after a certain treatment, in order to uh, to see what it actually does with the moth population and um, yeah, if what they are doing is is really uh, throwing a punch in the well, let's say moth population. So. Um, uh, this is an interesting uh, this is an interesting one and yeah we even heard a grower mention i can uh, now uh, also see the influence of secondary factors uh, like irrigating um, on my moth activity because after irrigation he always saw a few hours of very low activity and then the moth started to uh, to fly again well yeah, checking the dashboard requires less labor than counting the blue trapping lambs. Um, and the dashboard helped me timely uh, in times of increasing activity. And yeah, this is an, uh, um, an interesting statement. It was a, a grower who said, well, I can, using the dashboard, um, I can see populations rising in a few days and uh, quickly get uh, some some BT products from my other from my other location to quickly apply one on the Saturday morning, but in times of actually pretty low activity, he was able to cancel an order of nematodes because there was actually no need to uh, to apply nematodes at that stage. So yeah, it just increases your flexibility a bit, and I think that's very uh, very valuable. Now this is an interesting testimonial. Um, it is not potted plant related, but I really uh, recommend you read it. It's uh, a testimonial of a, a grower, LG Flowers, who is uh, uh, using potsy in a gerbras. And well, if you want to hear it from uh, yeah the grower's experiences, then uh, uh, please do read this uh, this testimonial. It's uh, recommendable. So. Um, my take home messages uh, for you are that uh, effective scouting is um, key to IPM programs and also key to improving them. And that POTC aids in these, this early detection of pests and this improvement of scouting. And by doing so, it increases bioinsecticide performance through early uh, and timely application. 
And uh, all in all, we believe that this contributes to our long term residue free strategy. It is important that we adapt ourselves, uh, that we adapt our scouting behavior to, to working with these devices to also um, check these digital dashboards preventatively and before we see anything in the greenhouse, because, well, as we have seen, POTC is better at detecting the first moths than we are. So we have to adapt our, uh, our scouting behavior to, uh, to also uh, look more preventatively. And then uh, I believe in that way we can really uh, achieve the highest added value to, uh, to our IPM practices. And with that, I, uh, I want to close by, uh, thank you, uh, by uh, thanking you for your attention. And uh, well, if you have any questions, uh, we can uh, discuss them now. Thank you. Thank you, Kuna, for this nice presentation. Um, we got some questions in the chats. Uh, maybe you can select a few and uh, answer them. 